Yes, ma'am. You better watch yourself. Watch <laughs> Really? He served with my father in World War I in France as a doctor. They were there together. My father was a doctor. Nice to meet you. Right, you got to do that now. Her father was a doctor and her brother was a doctor. Her father was a doctor and her brother was a doctor. Okay. What? Okay, all right. I just want to say hi, John. Hi, man. How are you? Hey, John, how are you? How are you? my date, Dr. Claude Moore. This is the chairman of the House Arms Service. How are you, How are you? This is Sharon Sark. How are you? Hi. Say hello, Say hello to John Warner. Huh? Nice to see you. Nice to see This is Dr. Claude Moore, 96 years old.
and Steve and everyone else back there in the shop. I hope you're hearing this. ABC was hearing it fine. Check one, two, three, shotgun. Back to the main podium feed. When I met George Bush, he was a castaway with a 30-page typeset resume. He once had said I had a voodoo plan, but in his job interview, he was a different man. No matter what I asked, he said to me, I want to be like you, Ron. I want to be just like you. Should Cap have a ladle like a silver spoon? Should we pile up the dead till it reaches the moon? When will I be president? I don't know when. You're going to have a good time then, George. Going to have a good time then. Okay, George, you can be my beam. We'll divide up the work so I can get some sleep. My turn when we got a summit to climb. Yours when it's Girl Scout cookie time. Gee, that sure sounds perfect to me. I'm gonna be like you, Ron. I'm gonna be just like you. George did real well for the first six years. When times are good, he always led the cheers. Times turned bad, Georgie Bush submerged. And now a brand new George Bush has emerged. You sure goofed with that mess in Iran. But still, I want to be like you, Ron. I sort of, kind of, distantly, remotely want to be like you. Should Cap have a ladle? Well, yes and no. Should we pile up to death? Golly, I don't know. When will you be president? I don't know when. You got to toe the line till then, George. I'm going to take the fifth till then. Have we met? It's a great big drag. It's a time-wasting snag. It's a bore. It's a snore. It's a pain. When he babbles of the things we love, it's time that the people complain. Though he might be right, do we night after night have to listen to Georgie say, I pledge allegiance to the flag. Let the flag have a holiday. That Dukakis guy put me to sleep, and I had a dream. Mario, 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 Mario. I dreamt we dismantled the ticket and put up a winning team. Mario, Mario, Cuomo, Mario, Mario, Cuomo. Mario, I dreamt of a guy named Mario. Although he has withdrawn, we always see him on TV. Mario, let's trade in the Duke for Mario. He won't be such a snooze, he'll dominate the news you'll see. Win with the guy unless he has at least the charisma of Jesse Mario. But who can we run with Mario? Dukakis, con Cuomo, Cuomo Dukakis, con John. Add a Greek to your ethnic rasta. We will dine on souvlaki and pasta. Mario, a landslide with Mike and Mario. Con Cuomo Dukakis fortissimo dice. Arriva
for Fritz. I knew him well. To run or not to run, that was the question. Whether twas nobler to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous newsmen. Why, the likes of Lord Geraldo would have pierced me through. Or to take arms against a sea of candidates and by opposing end them. To run, perhaps to win. I had to decide anon. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But, prithee, how couldst I sit idly by while George in his suit of Brothers of Brooks didst prevail? <laughs> when my lords were polled by the oracles of USA Today, the quality of Jesse has been strained. And what has become of Prince Albert of Gore? And what of Gary the Woman-Hearted? Some time ago, he re-entereth the fray with Donna Rice upon his place beneath. Aye, there's the rub. <laughs> she is twice blessed. Oh, 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 out, damn wasps. Be gone, O oh Simon of enormous ear. And thou, Babbitt, et tu, Bruce? <laughs> oh, Mario, Mario, wherefore am I, oh, Mario? What's in a name? A salami by any other name would still smell as strong. Deciding is, is such sweet sorrow. Lo, tis the Duke of Iowa caucus. My lord, the knives of the press are sharp. And I am dull. O oh, Duke of Dullness, thy Massachusetts miracle is in danger. Why, the Lord High Astrologer has issued this wicked warning. If you lose to George of Kinnebunkport, then he will become like Herbert of Hooverville. And this nation will be plunged into a plague of darkness. And the people will cry out for a great leader from the new land of York. Tippo ruled the Congress, ruled the Congress, and he got his way. But Tippo doesn't rule it today. Oh no, because Reagan runs the Congress, runs the Congress, and that's why we say that Tippo doesn't rule it today. You think that our song is all done? Well, maybe we've hardly begun. Cause the White House runs the Reagan, runs the Reagan, there are those who say the White House runs the Congress today. Wall Street runs the White House, runs the White House, and the Reagan too. So Wall Street runs the Congress, what's new? Greenspan runs the Wall Street and the White House and the Reagan too, so Greenspan runs the Congress, he do. Inflation runs the Greenspan and the Wall Street, White House Reagan too. Inflation runs the Congress, it's true. But Tippo ran inflation, ran inflation, so then in a way, old Tippo rules the Congress today.
Nice light, huh? <laughs> We didn't get you too bad, did we? <laughs> I think it's your turn now. You have a song for us? <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. And many thanks to the Capitol Steps for performing and for showing such uncommon mercy. <laughs> and now, you're all under arrest. <laughs> you know, someone asked how this group got started. Well, simple. The Congress drove them to it. <laughs> the, I've had members of the administration go up on the hill to testify. They came back the same way. Now, you know, the Capitol Steps might be getting some competition. What with Glasnost and all, the Soviets have started a similar group. They're called the Russian Steps. <laughs> now, political satire is still new over there, but the group has caught on fast. They've only performed once, and already they've been booked solid. Each. Each one of them got 20 years. <laughs> and just for the record, I'm speaking in jest. The, here, of course, some of you think I've been doing that for eight years now. <laughs> but seriously, this is always a great pleasure to have you all here. And tonight, it's a very special pleasure for Nancy and me because this is our last congressional barbecue. One of the great things I found in Washington is that whatever the issue may be, or whether it might be said to, whatever might be said during the day, after six o'clock, we all take off the cleats and all come together as friends and colleagues. And these barbecues for me have come to represent that friendship and respect for, that overrides any partisan or political difference. Uh, so let me just say how glad I am that you could join us tonight. It meant a lot to us, and I think it's going to be clear through to January to try to thank you for these eight years. So for tonight, let me just say thank you. I'll pardon those I've just arrested. <laughs> thank you all, and God bless you all. President, we're going to send you our record album. It'll be the first history of your ring in the world. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, I think I clearly speak for everyone here tonight, Democrat and Republican, Senator and member of the House, in uh, expressing our appreciation to you again for a wonderful evening. The, the fun and good times of the, of the Capitol steps and a simple 14-course picnic supper. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, administration, your administration, has several more months before it concludes. But the 100th Congress has only a few weeks before we adjourn. And as you note, <laughs> more applause. I think that's the White House staff, Mr. President. As you note, uh, after 6 o'clock, we're all friends. And tonight, with the White House behind us and uh, the Washington Monument in front of us, or vice versa, uh, it's a, a pleasant recollection of the many wonderful experiences that we've all shared with you in these eight years. We haven't always agreed. There have been many battles. But I think all of us that have joined in dispute and occasional disagreement, have admired your constancy of principle and position and your unfailing warm spirit and good humor. And I think that's probably the reason, among others, that the American people at the close of your administration record for you and Mrs. Reagan an overwhelming affection and goodwill. And so as we leave you, and in a few months, you leave us. 
I think I can say for all of us here tonight that unanimously we wish you and Mrs. Reagan uh, thanks, first of all, for your many courtesies, and secondly, as you go in not to a retirement, but a different uh, part of your life, in which I know you'll be concerned, as you have been, for the future of this country and for its role in the world, the best of every happiness, success, and satisfaction. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mrs. Reagan. Please, everyone, feel free to stay. I know there is still food and there are libations, and you're welcome to stay the evening. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.